going to lose. I won't be happy until I reach zero. My eating disorder helped me feel seen. For so many years, I didn't know what made me different or special. And then suddenly, I was the person that was able to lose weight. People appeared to care about me more. They wanted to know my secrets. Other people noticing my body changing. Correlated with people caring more about me in my head. If you relate to this, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that this world crazes weight loss. I'm sorry that you can be viewed as a better person for being able to manipulate the size of your body. I'm sorry that your eating disorder was praised when you were likely in a mental hell. And I'm sorry that you're going to have to let go of how that felt. It was you got when people praised, noticed and cared about you. In order to recover, we can't pursue that anymore. Hello everyone, my name is Michelle and today I am going to be talking about eating disorders, yay, again, because I have personally noticed a trend on TikTok, I guess it's not really a trend, it's just kind of a reality in which people will be giving advice to each other and the pro-Anna community is kind of jumbled in together with the pro recovery community and i'm not exactly sure how to make that stop because it is extremely triggering when you have an eating disorder in a lot of cases it just doesn't go away it will go away like it will be dormant for a very long time but the second something stressful happens to you you're like all right, well, it's time to do anything else other than my healthy coping skills. So I kind of got triggered by freaking TikTok. I guess I was just in a situation where I was, I had no control and obviously that's fuel for your addiction, ED behaviors whether it be restrictive, um, you know, BED, binge eating, um, bulimia, anything like that. But basically when you have a eating disorder, because even people with binge eating disorder, they will have restrictive tendencies because they're like, oh shit, I binged, um, and now I have to like restrict and that's how some it works for some people with BED. TikTok is oh my god you can find a trigger right away because with most disorders you don't want to get triggered obviously it's like like with most traumas but with an active eating disorder triggers feel very happy it's kind of like if you're aiming towards buying a better house like right now you live in a crappy apartment and oh yes trigger warning for this video definitely it's i'm gonna be showing some tiktoks that are like weird and they're they're triggering but they're definitely not the most triggering you see on there so definitely like Personally, comment below and let me know, but I have not seen a very safe community of pro recovery on TikTok. Like, obviously, there's many, many accounts like that, but they unfortunately get jumbled in with other things that are very unhealthy, and kids see this. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, let me know if you want more videos like this, what kind of videos do you want, how do you feel about the situation on TikTok. Um, I definitely think it's a big problem, enough to make a video about it, and I'm surprised there's not more videos about it. Um, be sure to turn the bell on and become a channel member if you would like to. My members get a shout out in every single video. Enjoy the video. I can't do this. I'm so full. 
だったら、じゃあ。Romanticization. I do follow a lot of pro recovery accounts, however, in the time that I was spam following these people, because I just made a TikTok like maybe a few, like a few months ago, so I was new, so I was just kind of going through and following different people, and then I decide whether I want to unfollow them or not. Based on, I don't know, whether I'm interested in their content. But there's people making videos on there like that are pro Anna. Like there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And basically, all that TikTok is doing is、um, saying, "Well, we banned the hashtags, you know." But the thing is, and it's the same as like when you're getting help for an ED. They always fix the. Problem the, that you see, but they don't fix the underlying problem, which is、um, the fact that it's still there. Like even when you're weight restored in an eating disorder, it's still there. So obviously, I've seen TikToks of people being like,、um, you know, the alligator. It's like it says like my lowest weight, and then it'll say like the alligator. So it's like they're lower than their lowest weight, and it's like that is.、Um, uh, Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people, even my very favorite favorite accounts, will show themselves at their lowest weight to show how much they've grown. However, if you're new to this channel, eating disorders don't have a look like you can be plus size, underweight, and still be. The same level of unhealthy, and I'm not going to go into the details about that. But basically, binging, restricting, purging—they're all extremely unhealthy behaviors.、Uh, please don't get please don't get triggered into one because if you're in a vulnerable situation, your brain is kind of like, huh? Like I can do so, I can control something. People will make it kind of like. An aesthetic, I guess. A lot of people have commented on how people will be like, "What I eat in a day," but it's like, if you were to like look at it, like they've been eating a bunch of food every day and they're still underweight. So it's like people are actually lying to their audience, saying that they're eating food that they're not. The going back to the apartment idea that I talked about earlier is that like. A lot of people with an eating disorder will have a goal weight, and if you don't, don't get one, <laughs>、uh, because the closer you get to it, the more unhappy you'll be.、Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but that's how your brain works when it's being deprived of nutrition. <laughs> it's kind of like when you live in a crappy apartment. It's like when the toilet is right next to the stove, kind of situation. And you feel like once you get to your goal weight, you will be in a mansion. You will be like, you know, I love to go on Zillow <laughs> and look at like the most expensive houses possible. It's so much fun. Definitely recommend it. Seeing people who are visibly, I don't know, romanticizing it. You, your brain will unconsciously pick up on that, and then, like maybe a month later, you'll start being like, "Oh, okay. Well, if I eat a certain amount of calories and exercise enough, then I can be the exact same size as this person by X amount of time." And that is extremely, extremely unhealthy.、Um, 
like when you self harm exteriorly, um, you can see it. However, you can't see the problems going on with your body inside, obviously, unless you have like some kind of scan. But uh, I don't know everything about problems that you can get, but I guess you can get scurvy. So that's weird. <laughs> a lot of people will share what they're eating, even though they have no experience, they're not trained professionals. They'll share what they're eating, thinking that they're helping or but they're actually not. Like, I do show a video of a person who's like eating grapes with a fork, which I don't know if that's common or not. However, that's definitely an ED behavior. You know, it's advice for children who go on there for actual help. And then they're met with this advice where your brain is kind of in an addictive way drawn to it. And once it's triggered, then it's kind of all you can think about sometimes. I can personally get triggered because it's like, oh, you know, like, body dysmorphia is, is real. And it's hard, it's a hard line because it's like people should be able to be in their body no matter what size they are and express themselves however when people are blatantly like putting their um, fingers around their wrists it's like I don't even understand that because like I have a pianist like piano fingers which means that like my fingers are super long so like it doesn't mean that you're any less or more thin based on like on whether you can fit your like fingers around your wrist um, it actually depends on how long you like I don't know anyways people give advice um, that isn't from a professional and they really think they're helping or they know they're not helping and they know that they're encouraging it because they I've saw I've seen a TikTok that's like if you're not the skinniest one in the room like you feel insecure and it's like <gasps> like that's super triggering um, because it makes your brain be like well if someone else can do that I can do that so people actually go on there. Um, me, myself, as a, I thought, recovered person from an eating disorder and um, haven't had any eating disorder behaviors in like a year. I don't know what it is about summer. <laughs> Maybe it's a summer thing. Uh, comment below and let me know if your behaviors are more so in the summer because I heard that like in the winter, your body naturally wants to go into kind of hibernation mode and eat more. and. I, I don't know what that's about, but th these people are basically thrown tips and tricks instead of um, actually help. It's like you have to search for the right people and you have to be a really, really strong person or just not vulnerable to an ED to be able to find the right person because there are a few people I follow who are amazing and help me so much through my ED, which I will make um, like a compilation at the end of people who I just adore. Um, but it takes time to find these people. Like for every one person who's actually trying to help you through their recovery experience, there's people who, uh, there's five people who are still sick unfortunately and it's not their fault it's you know i'm not trying to put any blame on anybody obviously i'm so sorry if like i come off that way and then there's the diet side of tiktok i have to make a whole ass video about how there's apps that are actually for eds like you are at a calorie deficit which means that you are starving yourself by these intermittent fasting apps and i just have to make a whole ass video about it because it's a thing and um very disturbing uh that people like use this because obviously restricting equals binging um, I know that you think you're strong, like, a lot of people think, like, I'm strong enough to not, to, to resist binge urges, but, like, I describe in all my videos, it's like when you're held underwater for so long by not eating, like, you're 
you can't breathe and you finally come up for air, your body's naturally going to be like, oh my god, like I need to take a big gasp of air because of how deficit you had been at. People will calorie count. Uh, I don't know how I feel about calorie counting. It's it's horrible, like, I don't know. Calorie counting is like, if I'm calorie counting, it means that I'm in my ED, basically. Like, and a lot of people are completely against it, and I understand why. People giving terrible diet advice, um, and they seem like a professional, but they're, they're just not, or they're just giving misinformation unknowingly which doesn't make it any better though because it's still triggering people. A lot of people will switch their ED from restricting to exercising. They're just dieting and they think that they're just getting the muscle but actually just because you're not putting like a lab the ED label on it doesn't mean that you're, you don't actively have one. And so it's, it's fuel for the people who do have an ED to hop on over to the diet, the workout side of TikTok. Um, it kind of reminds me of Tumblr, it like just teaches you. Uh, it's, I don't know what it is about TikTok, but it's just so easy to find echo chambers of people. And I just feel like that's not healthy. People glamorize for likes. So I definitely like understand that, like, I understand like like reliving your experience um, and a lot of people feel a lot better after sharing their experiences with their e own ED. However, like dissociated, people apparently, in, from what I've seen, like often will glamorize it and it kind of makes you want to, it makes you feel less valid, basically. It's like, well, I wasn't underweight, does that make me less valid? No. Not at all, I promise. I know you don't believe me, but it is what it is. <laughs> People describe their ED behavior, their past ED behaviors in detail. They're like, when I was in my ED, I am recovered now. And a lot of these people are recovered and they're just sharing things that they used to do when they were in their ED, however, trigger, yeah, it, it, it like it's just fuel for children. And because TikTok is mostly for children, I, I mean, not mostly, like obviously you can use it at any age, but when I guess when I say mostly, I mean, there's a lot of kids on there and so, that sucks because I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, the earlier you develop an eating disorder, the harder it's going to be to recover from it. People give diet tips that encourage EDs without even knowing it. Um, and young people have a vulnerable brain that's like, can literally trigger them into an ED. If they had otherwise not seen this content, maybe they wouldn't have been. I don't know. I could be, like, I have no idea I could be wrong, but maybe. Um, and yeah, let me know what you guys think about this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you want more or less videos like this, what kind of videos you'd like me to make. Do you agree or disagree with me? Turn the bell on if you get the chance so that you know whenever I upload every Monday, Wednesday, wait, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And I also do live streams. And thank you so much to my channel members. I'm so, so grateful for you. Make sure to comment because it makes the algorithm be like, okay, I guess I will push this video. Thank you so much for watching this video and goodbye. Please stop making TikTok a pro-Anna community. Stop it! I understand that making jokes helps a lot of people, but it's more damaging than helpful when you're making jokes about eating disorders on TikTok and it's very triggering! Please knock it off! There's so much more to life than being sick with an eating disorder. You know, sometimes it might feel like that's all you have. Stick with recovery until you reach that point where you no longer want to be sick. For so long, it was the only identity that I felt I had. And now I know categorically that I would never want to go back to that hell. Because life on the other end is worth it.
where someone's like, oh my god, my day was so bad, I had like three specks of dust. As with many lessons in eating disorder recovery, use your words, not your actions. We don't need to see that. It's showing us we're literally just making people feel invalid. Going to the gym every day. Compulsive exercise is an eating disorder behavior. If you're working out with the intention to manipulate your body shape, you're not pursuing full recovery. But going every single day is giving me red flag energy. Describing ED behaviors in detail. Who is this helping? What value does that give anyone? Absolutely nothing. Do you know what it can achieve? Giving vulnerable, mentally unwell people ideas. And lastly, engaging in trends that glamorize illness for likes. Just gives me the ick. Part three? Things that give me the ick in ED. <laughs>